Dude, my first time ever going viral was with a lightsaber, actually. I'm Liam, otherwise known as Lee Ham on the internet. I've got many an alias, but those are the two that most people go to call me by. I am 21 years old. That is quite the question. Um, I've been making YouTube videos for upwards of 10 years now. I started, my origins were Lego videos. I was big into Lego Ninjago and I took a step into the world of stop motion and failed miserably. I got more dislikes than likes and that's not easy to do, seriously. But through countless years of many different experimentations in terms of content and niches, whatever I was feeling, I was feeling something new every day. I found where I'm at now and now I'm, I've become a literal meme lord. It's a good time. So the YouTube channel is Lee Ham. I have almost 200,000 subscribers. Uh, I post daily videos of me covering memes that I find when I'm scrolling through social media. I, I basically, I cover things that I find funny myself, but I put my own little twist on it with my own weird, wacky humor and share it to my audience. Don't you miss her? No. Sunglasses emoji. Take off your sunglass. Why you do this? Hello, how are you doing? Terrible. My son has been in karate for six months now and is still a white belt. Hey guys, not to flex, but I'm a second degree black belt. Branched out into a few platforms. I was on TikTok for a while, but I don't like TikTok, so I try to stray away from that. But I am very big on Instagram as well. I'd say that's like my secondary platform. Well, so since doing YouTube, I've learned a lot. Some of the specifics, obviously, being editing. I've become a pro since doing it. And I taught, all of my, I taught myself all of that through YouTube itself. So obviously, that's the biggest takeaway from all the stuff I do. And as well as that, I've also learned how to better network with people because since doing YouTube, I've met so many crazy people. I have met people that I watched when I was a kid and I'm now friends with. And that's like, that's as surreal as it gets. It's it's crazy, I can't put it, I can't say it any other way. His name is Adam, otherwise known as Sky Does Minecraft here in the YouTube verse. Since inactive, very unfortunate. But nonetheless, I grew up watching him and then years later, someone added me to a group DM message and was like, yo, this guy's Adam. And I was like, like, the, like, it was, I, I started freaking out. I couldn't, I was, it was crazy. So a big thing was when I first started doing videos where I actually started basing my content more on my personality is I really had to learn how to show myself off in front of a camera and sometimes in front of a live audience. Say it was live streaming, which I don't always do, but one of the biggest takeaways from that was like obviously experimentation with you, you are a figure that your audience is watching and some of them look up to you, which can be scary because obviously you're, you're, you have this big impact and impression on them. So being able to learn how to more properly present yourself in front of an audience that the demographics could range from 13 years old. I have viewers that are over 60 years old and that's that's crazy because it's, it's two, two completely different generations. So presenting yourself to that audience was like something I really had to hone and perfect. And I'm still working on it to this day. So I wake up every day and I'm like, all right, I'm a YouTuber, what are we gonna do first? And it'll mainly start off with, I gotta make some scripts. So I'll scroll through Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, every social media site known to man. And I spend about 30 to 40 minutes kind of just finding stuff that makes me laugh. Like if I scroll and I see a meme and I let out like a little like tee hee, then I'll put that in a video. And then from there, obviously you get the script, record it, I'll hit some improv to the script. And then obviously once I'm finished recording, then the editing process begins and I've, it, it really doesn't take too, too long because like I said, I've been doing it for so long and the more you practice something, the better you get at it. And obviously through that, you become more and more efficient. And so over the years, I've managed to take my editing process for one video from two hours down to 15 minutes, which is crazy. And then obviously you finish the video, upload it and you see how it does. So if I'm gonna be honest, I really do prefer doing short form stuff because in the production end, it's much, much easier. The process, like it is far less time consuming. However, when it comes to really building an audience that's dedicated, not saying I wanna build a cult following, but I'd like to build a cult following, you need long form content for that because there's more personality that goes into that stuff and people are watching for longer periods of time. So they're more invested in not just the content, but you as a creator and that's why I, I'd like to branch more into the long form stuff, but for the time being, I'm comfortable doing short form. Being a YouTuber has really helped me be able to like 
just be more myself, not only in online, but in person as well. And being able to like create content every day and know that there are millions of people online that watch my stuff and are happy watching my stuff. That gave me sort of like a confidence booster when it comes to like IRL and social aspects, which I always struggled with. So those skills that I would learn through talking to my audience, I was able to just apply it to real life. And since doing that, I've really, really become an outgoing person. And I, was never, I wasn't really like that prior to doing this. So I'm very happy that I acquired that skill. So not really anyone too, too famous, but there is a solid group of maybe like five or six people that in 2019, where I really started taking my YouTube journey seriously, we all started around the same time. And now some of those guys have grown into multi-million subscriber channels and I still talk to them on a regular basis. So they fit into the famous category, I think, but it's like, I've known them since square one, literally. And having that relationship with them and seeing them and myself grow as a creator, because we all, we all do relatively similar content. So we balance ideas off of one another and whatnot. But yeah, growing and seeing them where they're at now, it's, it's, it's awesome. Got my boy Oz Media, he's good family. He's at about 500,000 subscribers now. Me! I actually may have just broken the door there. Illuminati, Blair, shout out to her. She's always, she's one of the nicest people I've ever met. In the few conversations we've had, 10 out of 10 personality. Others are struggling to keep them and keep them happy. You might be surprised to see Starbucks as our topic of the corporate casket today. After all, they're known for being this great place to work with health benefits, parental leave, tuition coverage, and even dental insurance if you're a full-time employee. And then I would say another guy who has over a million would be The Click. He does very similar stuff to what I do, but he puts his face into a lot of his content. And that's the path I would really like to go in the near future with the stuff that I make. Oh, what is that smell? Oh my God, one star. And that star is you. <laughs> this is a bit of a hot take, but I am a bit of a workaholic and I really, really, really enjoy when most of my day is enveloped in what I do, whether that be interacting with my viewers or just making content myself. And I don't know, I find myself a lot of the time using what I would normally have as free time to actually go and work on stuff I have to get done for the future because I'm really big on getting I'm, re I'm really big on time management and such as getting stuff done that I could do tomorrow, do it today. Because then that allows me to stay ahead of schedule and come up with new ideas. And being on top of like my schedule and everything like that in the times where, of course, as everyone does, I like to go and hang out with friends. I don't really have the stress of my work because I'm so active and on top of getting my stuff done in the times where I do have that free time and I wanna spend it outside of my work life, I can leisurely. Dude, it's weird. It's like, like I find myself times where I will be debating whether I want to play a video game or make a new video. Not 90% of the time, I'll go and make a new video because obviously while I have the enjoyment of playing Super Mario 64, a little Paper Mario with a thousand year door, sometimes, I don't know, I just find talking into the mic and preparing stuff that I know people around the world are going to enjoy. I really find more enjoyment in that taught me how to hold my fart for seven hours straight a legendary technique i did most of the homework but i didn't finish it because i was very busy teachers i didn't finish it the next grade according to teachers the actual next grade when you failed the test but you still got a higher grade than your friend call myself a brainiac so as you can see with all of this i really like anime of all the anime, Dragon Ball is like my go-to. I have watched all of Dragon Ball Z, which is like the original like mainstream series, I think 13 times, and I'm a nerd that I know that, but I love it to death, seriously. Obviously, the gateway into the many hobbies that I have when it comes down to it is the internet. If I wanna watch Dragon Ball, I got YouTube, I got Crunchyroll. There's so many places to go and watch it if you want to. Pokemon Go, I've been playing video games since day one. Pokemon was among that. I mean, obviously, when it comes to my whole parkour background, I've been doing gymnastics and stuff like that since I was like three years old. So obviously when parkour started to become a little more intense, I was like, sure, let's give it a shot. 
Luckily, since doing everything on YouTube, I haven't really had to deal with any potential fake people trying to get in my life because of the online success I had. And that really comes down to because I keep my circle very, 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 I can't emphasize enough how close my circle is. I have been friends with the same certain group of people for like my entire life and that'll probably never change. And when someone new comes in, I know they're gonna be a loyal friend. So I don't really ever have to worry about whether they have some sort of ulterior motive or they're just trying to be friends with me for, they, they want all my subs or they want some sort of attention. So luckily I, I know plenty of people that it has happened to and I've witnessed it happen myself, but I'm blessed to have never dealt with anyone like that or any situations like that as a whole. I've known Liam since, yeah, for, uh, freshman year of high school. Me and Liam go way back. He was just saying some really funny stuff, man. Liam has always been an expressive guy. Is he still the same? In a way, in, in some ways, sure. But I feel like he's definitely changed overall as like better, more mature, more goal, you know, uh, oriented person than he was before. I think everything that was cool about him has just got cooler, you know, he's just more focused towards being successful. So he changed in a good way. Oh. As a friend, I mean, he's someone that you feel like you can't really ask for, you know? Like, you can't ask for anybody better than Liam than a friend. He's always there. He'll support you whatever you're doing, no matter what, because he knows what it's like to have to struggle to get through something or to be passionate about something that, you know, that only you really want to do. And he doesn't care about what other people think about him or if people are judging him or not. My name is Ryan and I've been a fan of Lee Ham's for two years now. Why do I like Lee Ham's videos? It's because he's relatable and he's funny. I love it when he makes fun of like memes or just like jokes around and like, he just, it's like, it's comforting knowing like we have like the same like sense of humor. What has his videos done for me personally? They've got me through a rough time in my life and these past two years, he's really like helped me through a lot. He's made me laugh several on several occasions watching his videos daily. And he just has been there when no one hasn't. The one thing I would want to say to Liam was is thank you so much for like being there. Even if he doesn't know it, like he's been there for me through so much. And I just want to say thank you. I think as a friend, Liam is probably one of the best and definitely my best. I think that with YouTube, I have grown so much as a person and I'm proud of what I do on the platform. I can make people smile and I can go to bed at night knowing I made at least one person who's probably going through something happy, even if it's just for a split second. And I think that's what it's all about and that's why I do this. I love being a YouTuber.